Modern protective helmets are a combination of advanced engineering design concepts and innovative materials. This presentation discusses foams, plastics, and composite materials that are used for protection in modern helmets. Sports are a necessary part of our lives. They provide the much needed exercise. Sports cover a wide range of activities from walking and running to activities that are specially designed in the form of competitive sports such as football and baseball. Sports are very much integrated in our life and society. Winners of major sporting events such as Olympics, World Championships and National Championships are seen as symbols of human excellence. Athletes demonstrate what our bodies are capable of doing, although most of us cannot go to that level. Numerous terms in popular language refer to sports related uh, examples. For example, hitting out of ballpark refers to baseball. Sports scholarships enable athletes to pursue education and also lead to jobs. The sports industry is valued over a half trillion dollars in today's market. It has a global reach through world championships and Olympics and, refer and offers tremendous economic opportunities. At the top level of sports, sometimes athletes may see protective gear as burden that reduces their performance. At the time when they are trying to break world records, additional weight and inconvenience of using a helmet may not be favored by them. But in recent times, the governing bodies of sports have become very proactive in assessing the safety of athletes in their sports and mandating use of certain protective gear. Scientists have to work with their guidelines to develop the helmets and other protective gear. But the real challenge is to develop a helmet that, that is not a burden but helps the athlete in some way apart from the obvious objective of protection. Cycling helmets have achieved this goal in a beautiful manner. Biomedical research is showing long-term effects of various kinds of injuries including blunt trauma. The bottom line is that the athletes are humans and their lifespan is well beyond their short uh, sports career. The protective gear is for their greater well-being. The loading conditions are different in every sport. For example, bicycle riders may have a single impact when they fall down and then the helmet is changed. In comparison, boxers are showering blows after blows on each other's head. In football, the helmet may withstand several impacts in a game where players may collide or fall down on the ground. After years of steady increase, the bicycle-related deaths slightly de declined in 2010. In the current year, the number of a number of cities are launching biking programs and encouraging the use of bicycles. So the number of injuries may also increase as more people cycle. Based on the Federal Highway Administration's estimate for the cost of each injury and death, the bicycle injuries cost over $5 billion each year. Considering the average price of helmet to be about $25, 52,000 helmets would cost only $1.3 million and few saved injuries will more than pay for their cost. Providing head protection is the obvious primary objective for cycling helmets, but to make the use of helmets more attractive, designers of new helmets have relied upon reducing the weight and increasing comfort and air circulation inside the helmet. By using advanced engineering concepts, new helmets can cut down the wind resistance and improve the performance, and that's a clear and that's a clever way of making helmets attractive for cyclists. The process of developing a new helmet is very intensive. Simulations and theoretical calculations are first conducted to arrive at parameters such as the type, thickness, uh, and material of the foam. Then numerous prototypes are constructed and tested to ensure that safety and performance targets are achieved. The target values for energy absorption ca capability for a child's helmet will be different from an adult's helmet. Most of the cycling helmets have a three-layer construction. The outermost layer is hard and stiff. It is usually made of plastics or fiber-reinforced composites for lightweight. This layer is very thin, only 1 to 5 mm in most cases. Cyclists may fall on the road, and this layer will protect them from gravel, sharp rocks, and also from friction of the road. This layer also helps in distributing the impact force on the large area of the intermediate layer, Distributing the force over a large area helps in reducing the risk of injury. The intermediate layer is a rigid foam. It has optimized strength, stiffness, and energy absorption capability for a given range of impact forces. The innermost layer is a flexible foam. It conforms to the head of the person and provides close fit and comfort. This foam also absorbs energy under compression. 
The harness system is an important part of the helmet. It keeps the helmet fixed in place and does not let it fall off in the case of an accident. The harness system is not shown in this figure. The outer layer is usually very thin compared to the foam layers. Existing helmet uh, shells are made of plastics such as polyethylene tetraphthalate, polycarbonate or acrylonitrile butadiene styrene. PET is a common plastic that is used in making water or soda bottles. Examples of ABS plastic can also be found in homes. Covers of small kitchen appliances or electronic gadgets can be made of ABS. The thickness of foam layer may be different at different locations. In cycling, there is a greater risk of falling forward due to hard braking. So the front part of the helmet is thicker uh, in a normal biking, uh, road biking helmet. Styrofoam is commonly used for the rigid foam layer. It is the same material that is also used in hot beverage cups, but in helmets, its properties are more controlled. The flexible layer is also made from foams. Polyethylene, polypropylene, or polyvinyl chloride foams can be used in helmets. In any polymer can be converted to a foam. In helmets, the thermoplastic polymer foams are common because their strength, stiffness, and density can be tailored. Examples of some common polymers that are used as foams are provided in the blue box. These foams are also used in bicycle helmets. Different companies may use foams of different polymers. A layer of elastomeric foam can be found in boxing helmets. Usually foams have two different types of microstructures. In the first example, the foam is made of struts. In this case, the pores or cells of foams are interconnected. An example of this kind of foam is dishwashing sponge, which absorbs a lot of water in, in its pores because of interconnected porosity. The second type is a closed cell foam, in which the cells are covered by thin walls from all sides and are not interconnected. Closed cell foams have high density, but they also have higher strength and stiffness. Numerous varieties of foams are now available, um, that, and they are all around us, in car seats, in shoes and sneakers, and as packing materials just to name a few. Stress strain diagram obtained under compression testing shows that foams have a large stress plateau. During this plateau, we can keep compressing foam sometimes over 70% of the initial thickness and it still maintains the same level of strength. This is ideal behavior for use in helmets. In general, higher density foams have higher strength and stiffness. All their properties are de uh, defined by the cell size and the thickness of their struts or walls. Make sure to read the manufacturer's directions for use. They have looked at these properties and defined the usage conditions, such as age of the user, speed limits, and other safety information. When to change a helmet is a very important question. Sometimes the damage can be visible. Especially the bright colors of the outer shell can show signs of wear and tear. However, foams may not be that friendly in showing the damage. It may be invisible. The scanning electron micrograph at high magnification shows that cells of a helmet foam have completely deformed under compression. And now the foam does not have the same protection capability as the new foam. So after a hard impact, the helmet should be changed. Otherwise, it may not protect in a similar manner. You may have noticed that the plastic parts degrade over time. For example, a garden hose may become brittle and crack over a period of time. Similar effects happen on helmet foams also. Manufacturers usually recommend the useful lifespan for their product. If you don't find any information about the helmet, get a new one after about four or five years of normal usage. Design concepts are used to obtain the most benefits from the helmet. A time trial or speed cyclist may wear a teardrop-shaped aerodynamic helmet, which is designed to reduce the wind resistance. This helmet is often tested in wind tunnels that are used for testing cars and airplanes. A helmet for recreational biking or mountain biking may have a similar shape or a simpler shape because the speeds are not very high. However, it may have an intricately designed pattern of holes to reduce the helmet weight and increase airflow around the head for greater comfort. The materials may cost only about $3 in a helmet. The design and testing process can be expensive and add to the cost. Now you can look around for helmet 
sports designed for different sports and try to connect their features with the conditions encountered in that sport. All helmets have the primary purpose of providing protection from injury. Boxing headgear is different from cycling helmets. There is no hard outer shell in the boxing headgear because it can injure the opponent. But the foam layers are also thinner and softer. However, it, it is still designed to spread the impact force over a large area and absorb energy of the impact. All flexible material construction helps in wrapping the headgear around the head and face of the boxer and obtaining a snug fit. Use of viscoelastic foam layers helps in absorbing the energy into the foam. So based on the discussion, remember, use a helmet and use the correct helmet. Read safety instructions and follow them for the best possible protection. All helmets are tested against accepted test standards and are tracked by serial number as shown in a typical helmet warning label. The user should read the label and the user and usage manual very carefully.